Hi everyone, today I am going to show you how to make um, buttons. And we're going to start that in just a moment. Okay, today I am going to show you how I make buttons. So, what I started with was a tree branch and I cut it. I'm not going to show you the sewing part. I basically just cut it into discs. Then I take my handy dandy drill and I'm using a, what is this? I'm using a drill bit. This is 3 slash 32. Do you see that? Can you see it? Okay. So I put it in my drill, I tighten it in there, okay, I take a wooden block, I put my disc in there, and I drill. Okay, and once I've got a hole, I just clean it up, see, then I turn it to the other side. Drill a hole. Once I got a hole, I just clean it up. Okay, and then I have this. Okay, and I use this wooden block. Now I'm gonna take my drill bit out, put it away, or my husband gets upset because he can't find his drill bits. <laughs> And then what I do is I sand. So I have five sheets of sandpaper here, okay? And they're different grit. Is it five? Four, I have four. So what I was told was the highest number, what does it tell me my number? Oh, so C220. The higher the number, um, the finer the grit. So I go with my lowest number, so 220. Then I've got 280. Then I've got 400. And then I've got 600. Okay, so six, four, 280. And 220. I did four. Um, that's just what I found when I went to the hardware store. Um, and then I just start sanding. Okay. So I start sanding and I sand both sides. Now, I am not picky about what kind of wood I use for my button. I'm just using branches that I find um, in my yard or if I see that someone is trimming one of their bushes, lilac bushes or whatever, I just get some sticks from it. Usually at least one inch in diameter. And then I sand it. Then I have a old makeup brush. And all I do is I get the fine powder away to see how my sanding's going. Now in this, this one's pretty good, but it, I don't know if you can see it, but very close up, there's little kind of holes there for whatever reason. I keep sanding until those are gone. And if I, I have sanded my fingertips before, I uh, take a <coughs> kebab stick and sometimes I'll use that, I'll just stick it in the hole and then I'll use that to sand. Okay. Um, sometimes I'll put it on an angle, whatever works. Usually just using my fingers works the best, but like I said, I have sanded my fingers off before. Then I just clean it up, get the fine, 
See over here how nicely polished, there's no little holes or anything. But over here, there's some stripes from the saw still, and there's some little holes. And I don't like those imperfections. See what I'm talking about there? So those are the little holes I'm talking about. But this side is nice and smooth and perfect. So I just keep going until I get those all nicely sanded off. And if I just have one area that's got, I'll go to the edge of my sandpaper and leave the side. But I mean, you wanna sand it evenly because you don't want, you don't want, uh, you don't want the button lopsided. Now this button, actually, I am using on a dog sweater. A customer ordered a dog sweater with painted buttons. So these buttons are going to be used for that. I, I just love rustic buttons. Now, see how it's bark on the outside? I give that even a little sound. I don't do it perfection, but just so that there's no sharp points. Because, you know, if a person catches their finger or something on one of your buttons, that's no good either. So I'm just going to give it a little to make sure that it's good. I'm going to do a little bit more right here. And I just like the looks of the rustic buttons. Okay, so this side is fairly good. See how nice and smooth it is? It actually, my son teases me. He says, they feel like plastic by the time you're done. And they really do. So this one I did before. And see right here, there's some little imperfections. And so I'm just going to tidy those up. So when I do buttons, I don't just do two. I usually do about ten. But since I do it all by hand, it takes time. So I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me do all ten. But this little makeup brush, it just fell off the handle. <laughs> Here's the handle. Uh, I guess a smart person would glue the handle back on, but I haven't gotten that far yet to being smart. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so see, little imperfections. I'm just going to give that some more of a sand, and we're going to keep going. So I'm going to do my 10 buttons, <clears throat> and I'll come back, and then we'll do the next um, kind of sandpaper. Okay, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, so we're back, and I've done sanded for the first layer all ten of my buttons. So that's how they look now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that one away. And now, I, because I've gotten all the bumps and grooves out of it, I'm just using these to um, smooth them up. I'm not going to spend tons of time. The first um, sandpaper is the one that I spend tons of time on. So I do one side, I do the other, I give it the bark some tidying up, I drop it on the table to get my fluff, my powder off, give it a and this is, you know, you can double check to see that it's good quite a nice little button. 
And like I said, I use these on my knitted items, my crocheted items, dog sweaters, hats, booties. And I don't make a lot. That's why I haven't invested in a proper sander or anything like that. It's just to show that you can do it at home with stuff that your husband has. Or heck that you have. I cut them with a miter saw, which is something my husband did not have and I asked for for Christmas. He said he felt very weird going and buying his wife a miter saw, but I have made thousands of buttons with it because I do sell them in my Etsy store, but I don't really make them much to sell. I have to charge a lot because it's all hand done and I don't know. It's not something that I try and sell. So see, you just give it a bit of a once over on this grade and I just try and do the whole sheet with both sides. And then I do the bark. And then I give it a tidy up and I go on to the next one. Okay, so I'll be back. If you're liking this so far, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. And if you want to know when I do um, new videos, just hit the little bell and it'll give you a notification that I have posted a new video like I've said before um, I don't do a, a regular schedule of videos because I work full-time I have my family full-time I have my family full-time and this is just to help me get prepared for when I retire which is not going to be for many many years but I figure if I get things going now, by the time it's time for me to retire, I will have a base, and hopefully YouTube is still around then. <laughs> and also, you know, it's almost like a journal. I can use YouTube as a journal for myself uh, if I have an item I haven't made in a long time. I can go and say, hey, how did I make that? <laughs> I don't write down patterns. I just look at something and do it. So, very much like my cooking, I don't do the same thing exactly the same way twice. So, if I can actually go and look and say, hey, how'd I do that? And I can follow my own steps. That's kind of cool, right? So, it's like YouTube is my own personal journal. Anyway, so I'm going to do this. You just want to do this. For all your buttons, it's just to get another layer of sanding on it. Get that powder brushed off. And then I'll come back for the next okay, one. Okay, I'm back now. So I'm done all ten with that grit of paper. So the next one I'm going to do is the 400. And my pages are getting pretty used, so it'll be time to switch them out soon. But like I said, I don't um, make tons and tons of buttons, so it's not like when I go to a craft sale, I bring buttons or anything. I never bring buttons to a craft sale yet. I uh, have seen a few people bring buttons, and I don't know, they just don't seem to do very well, so I'd rather use them on my items. So when I say my items are 100% handmade. I'm not joking. So just like the other one, we're just going to give this a sand on the whole paper, both sides, and the bark. And see, the bark is still nice. Well, it's quite powdery right now, but covered in sawdust but it does come out quite nice so there we go so we're just going to do all these on this grid of paper 
And this is where you can accidentally file your thumb or your finger or whatever, so be careful. I try not to use my, uh, my kebab stick here because at, at this point you're getting to quite the fine grinding and you don't want to have a flaw in your button because you slip with the kebab stick. So, yeah. So I just use my hands at this point. And like I said, this is just to give it a nice smooth finish. Like, you know, when you're doing your nails and you're just getting those ridges out. So. And so I just, sometimes I just turn my paper around because I'll see that a certain area is getting used a whole bunch. And the rest of it isn't, so don't forget to do your bark. Sometimes I forget to do my bark. And give it a nice little brush off. They're getting so smooth now, though, they seriously do feel like plastic. I'm not joking. But, and if you wanted to do more sanding, you totally could. Um, mine, I describe them as rustic handmade buttons so you know this is what I do if you want to go a step further feel free I just think it's neat that my items have homemade buttons so when I say 100% handmade I'm not joking even the buttons are made by me and these buttons are going to be painted and so I'm going to take you through the whole process of doing my painted buttons. And like I said, this is the way I do it. Doesn't mean any other person's technique is wrong. This is how I do it. I asked, I was talking to a co-worker of my husband and he was from South Africa and he, I asked, he did word work. All kinds of woodwork like he made furniture from scratch like I'm talking like from like not from planks and stuff like that but I'm talking from sticks and logs he'd make beautiful furniture anyway I asked him how to make these buttons and he kind of looked at me like I was crazy but he said get a stick cut it send it you can either oil them, which I've done, and I really like that technique, or you can paint them. And so I do both. So this video is for painted buttons, and I would have to do another video, but I don't know when I'll do that, of how to do um, oiled buttons. Well, there we go. I accidentally talked through that whole sanding process. So. Now I'm going to my very last sanding sheet. Now this one is the 600. So the higher the number, the uh, lower the grit. And this is just getting, oops. <laughs> this is just polishing it up nice and nice and neat. This is just taking all that any kind of grooves or anything that was left and it's just smoothing it all out like a baby's bum. Don't forget to do your bark too because you don't want anything to snag. You make a beautiful knitted project and then you have your button snag it. That's nothing. Nothing good about that, I'll tell you that for nothing. Yeah. Man, these are turning out nice. And see how good they are? They are so smooth. <coughs> So we're just doing the same thing with this, so you don't need to watch me. Don't forget to do your bark. And then we're going to take a soft cloth or whatever and we're going to kind of 
wipe the last of the sanding off on that step. So pretty. I just love, I, I really love these buttons. And it's so funny because I would go to buy wooden buttons from people and they'd want like $12, $15 for like two buttons. And so in my Etsy store, I charge $5 for two buttons. And, you know, and I'm showing you how to do it yourself. So you can even go and make yourself a whole bunch of buttons. But as you can see here, it does take time. Like I've already been at this for an hour. And I've sped up the movie for you guys. So, And I haven't even gotten to the painting. The painting takes even longer because you've got to give it time to... Um, dry. Okay, so I'm going to come back when I'm done. Okay, I'm back. I finished my last button. Now I'm going to take a piece of paper towel. I'm just going to give them a little polish. Polish them up a bit. Get any extra uh, uh, sawdust off of them. Because, I mean, this sawdust is insane, right? So, yeah. We're just going to give these a bit of a polish. And again, if you see any flaws that are bugging you, you can redo them. in it. I may have to redo that one. I'm noticing. So see how pretty it is, but over in this side it's got a couple of lines there. If I run my nail over it, it kind of catches. So I might sand that one a bit more. But this just lets you know what you've got. Oh. Yeah. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? See the bark? These ones are going to be painted, so when I seal them, those little blemishes will be sealed. But I do like things pretty perfect. Yeah, see? And they do, they feel like, they feel like, um, they feel like plastic. I may have to do redo a couple of these. I think it's because I was in a rush, but see how nice they are in the bark. So any that you decide to reduce, at this point it's no big deal, we've not painted them or anything. Nice buttons. And I've got quite a few of them now. I can take them up and paint them. We'll start by sealing them. Look at that one, that's got a neat little blemish in there. That's part of the wood. Isn't that cute? I just love it. I just love it. But of course, when you paint them, you're not going to be able to see that characteristic. So see. There, see how nice the... <laughs> I've got fluff from my paper towel. See how nice the bark looks? With our button. I mean, these are truly rustic buttons. Here we go. See, 
Lucy. And there we go. And there's our buttons. So now I'm going to pause this here because the next, I did this part downstairs of my house because I didn't want sawdust everywhere. Now we'll go upstairs and I'll do the painting aspect up there. So hang tight. Okay, I'm back. So now we are going to seal our buttons. So you're going to need some water to uh, clean off your paintbrush. Of course, you're going to need your buttons. And I'm using Podgy. It's glue, glaze, sealer. It acts as all as those. So. <sighs> I'm going to use this and I'm going to use this brush. Okay. And we're just going to do one side. Make sure you don't seal the holes closed, that would be bad. So I'm just gonna pull it all to the edges. Here. I'm gonna use a pin to make sure I keep those holes closed, okay? So a pin. So, all we're gonna do is we're gonna very much like doing nails, we're going to start in the center and pull it out to the edges. Okay, see what I'm doing there? And this is a fairly fine brush, so it's not going to leave lots of streaks as long as we don't go too thick. Okay. And once it's done, we'll put it to the side. And we're just going to do this with all the buttons. And we want to get, make sure we get all the way to the edges. Once again, I clogged the hole. There we go. Make sure you keep those holes unclogged. Put it to the side. Now this stuff dries clear, so if you have some, some uh, white streaks like you see, don't worry about it. It will dry clear. it to the side and in between each one of our paints we are going to let it dry for about an hour so once again this is a long process not that it takes long to do but just for the drying and see how I have both holes clogged there so make sure you don't clog those holes I keep those holes not clogged. And there we go. We do want to also do the um, bark. So if you want to just go around the edge like that. That's fine too. So, from the center, work out to the edges. Don't clog those holes. 
And if you do, take a pin and just unclog them and then go around the outside. Okay, and put it to the side to dry. And like I said, this is, I think I got this to seal a puzzle or something at one point. And you use so little of it. Well, I didn't for the puzzle, but for everything else I do that it's just lasted and lasted. And you don't want them touching each other. Looks like some of mine are touching. So you probably don't even have to give it an hour to dry actually because I'm looking and some of these are already dry. Go around the edges and then my final one. Go. And go around the edges. Going around the edges, see? Just like that. Okay, we'll put that to dry. So see these? These ones are already dry. That's how quick. So, you know what? I might just do another coat right now. So we did that side. Um, I'm going to flip it over. Do the other side. And do those edges. Okay. So, go from the center. Whoops, I just did the same side again. Oh well, double coating on this one. And I'm just trying to make sure I didn't clog that hole. And then do the edges. I'm out of frame there. Okay. So, turn it over. Do the other side from the center outwards. Don't clog those holes. And don't let there be bubbles either. If there's little bubbles, you want to spread that out. And then do your bark. You want to do that bark. Get right in there. Do that bark. Okay. And then put it to the side. So turn it over. Do that bark. Look at that. Make sure there's no bubbles. If there's bubbles, brush them out. If there's a slight space between your bark and your wood, get in there. Okay. Now the thing we have to be careful because we didn't let them dry, because I'm obviously impatient, <laughs> is we don't want them to stick to the paper towel. So, do that bark, set it to dry, and don't let them touch each other. We don't want them to stick. Okay, there we go. So see, this is just the sealing, like the sealant. So. We, uh, very much like when you do your nails, we don't have to do many coats of sealant. Don't forget to do your bark. I think I forgot to do my bark. Don't be like me, do your bark. Okay. So what I was saying is just like with nails, 
you uh, you don't need to have tons of coats of sealant. At least I don't do them. Doesn't mean you don't you can't. You definitely can. And you want to make sure they don't stick to the paper towel. There we go. And we're just doing both sides, even though you're not going to be painting both sides. It's nice to have both sides done. Um, to have both sides done so that, uh, you know, it's shiny on the other side too, right? Yeah. There we go. Oh, I just painted my tripod. See, and this one... Okay, so. Um, and you know what you could do is if you wanted to, um, like I do with my paper beads, is you could string them up on fishing wire through the holes so that way you know for sure they're not going to stick to anything. I'm just going to keep moving mine around. But, and then do that bark here we go and the last one these are going to be such pretty little buttons and I'll show you what the maybe I'll show you the buttons on the dog sweater I don't know. I didn't do a tutorial on the dog sweater I made, but it's basically one of my hoodies with a little hand and button. Yikes! There we go. Okay, so we want to clean off our brush and our water. I just went and grabbed a old. Uh, Jar. We recycle our jars, so I just went and grabbed one. Clean your pin. There we go. Clean your brush really well, because this is a, a glue-like thing, and you don't want it making your paintbrush all glued. So we're not going to put this paintbrush away yet because we're also going to do uh, a top coat, so to speak. But just in case you're wondering what we're making, this is what one of the finished buttons looks like. Isn't it cute? Yeah. So... And then the other side. It's shiny, but nothing fancy. So, okay. So we're going to let those dry. And we'll come back and do step two. Okay. Okay, so we're back. And we're going to start doing some painting on our buttons. So... Like I said, we want it to look like this button. So, we are going to take this paintbrush. See how fine it is? And we are going to take some purple paint and some yellow paint and some green paint. So this one's going to have purple flowers. Now, if you've watched any of my um, nail videos, you'll know that I use um, I use a dotting tool to make my flowers. Well, you can get the same thing with the back of your paintbrush. So, um, I just want to show you the difference. So, that really fine paintbrush right here actually has quite... A large back whereas this paintbrush which is thicker has a smaller 
nub. So I'm going to use the smaller nub. Okay, and I'm going to just shake up my purple. And I'm just going to use the paint that's in the lid, okay? Now, we're just going to put a few. So we put a dot and we bring it down. Dot, 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 bring it down. I always do five petals on my flowers. Okay, so we're just doing the flower part now. Okay, so a dot, bring it down, dot, bring it down, and I'm going to put three or four flowers on each button. Okay. And then we're going to let it dry for another hour. So I let that last one dry for an hour. And again, I'm just using the paint from the lid. As you saw, I gave it a good shake before I started using it. So there we go. See those? Aren't they turning out nice? I do love my painted buttons. And they're so easy to do. And it's quite often the same designs that I use on my nails. So this one I'm going to give six petals to. No big deal. It's your button. You paint whatever you want on it. And you do it how you like it. Oh, so see, aren't those pretty? And I'm just going to do this tall 10 buttons. Yep. And then the ones I don't use for my little dog sweater, I'm going to put on a card and the next time someone wants to buy some buttons, they're already made. And I didn't have any of these left, so this is good that I'm doing this. And I'm just using the back of the paintbrush. That's all I'm using. And it works like a hot darn. Okay, so do that tall tin and let them rest and dry for an hour. And then we'll come back and do our next Okay, step. so I got all ten of them done. So now you want to make sure you clean off that tip of your paintbrush because next time you do fancy flowers like this, you don't want to get the other color in. So there we go. We're done with the purple. We're going to let this dry for an hour and then we'll come back and we'll do our green. So. See you in a bit. Okay, so we're back again. <laughs> now we are going to do the leaves on our flowers. So it's been an hour and our little flowers are all dry. So now we're going to do leaves. And I just gave my paint a really good shake. By the way, I don't think I told you, these are just acrylic paints. Yeah, and I showed you... The sealer was podgy. Okay. So again, I'm just going to take... Oh, I didn't get much paint in the cap. 
Let's shake that some more. And I'm going to use my very fine paintbrush here. Wow. Mm, okay. So. Get some green. And we're just going to do... Hmm. We're just going to do some fine lines. Out. From the flower. Just some nice fine lines. Okay. So just just a V. So I'm going in and I'm going out. And as we paint them, we'll just put them aside. And again, we're going to let these dry. Okay. And then here we go. There. Just a little V. There we go. And I'm just doing them towards the outside edge. Okay. Hope you can see this. So, in one way, out the other. In one way. In one way, out the other. And there we go. In one way, out the other. In one way. Out the other. go. So, just a little V. I hope you can see this. OK. 
kind of move the angle of my camera. So we're just doing a little V. And last one. There we go. Okay, so then we're going to give our paintbrush a nice little wipe down. Get it nice and clean. We'll put the lid on our green paint. That's pretty thick green paint. I'll tell you that for nothing. And since our flowers are dry, we're going to go straight to our yellow centers. We can do those. There, that one's better. So, we're again going to use this, just the tip. And we're just going to put it in the center of our flower. There we go. There we go. And there we go. And there. That just finishes off our beautiful little button. So, center, center, and center. Center, center. Center. And then after this, our next step will be to do a nice glossy finish. Now, if you have the podgy, you can use that again. I'm going to show you what I'm going to use. But you know, putting the center on these flowers, it just, I think, adds so much. And if you want, you can use nail polish too for this. And you can put a nice sparkle nail polish. But I think the purple with the yellow is just beautiful. And it's such an easy little design. And again, we're going to let this dry for an hour before we put our top coat on. And it's very much like I said, doing um, nails. So there we go. That's the end of our painting. Make sure you clean your tools. It's very important. And don't those buttons look wonderful? Okay, so now we're going to let those dry, and we'll come back to do our final step. The end okay, of hi everyone, I'm back. Whoosh, don't hit your table. Okay, so I'm going to finish my buttons off now, and I'm going to finish them with something called Glossy Accents. And now I'm going to just pour a little bit. Oh, maybe not. 
Maybe. I will snip the tip off that and try again. Pour a little bit on my button and use my wide brush and just use it to finish this off. Okay, we got to make sure that those holes don't get clogged. And there we go. That one is done. And so I'm just going to put a little bit in the center. And like we did before, I'm just going to spread it around. to all the edges. There we go. Okay. So a little bit on the center and I'm just going to spread it all around. Don't clog those holes. and my brush feels hard. I'm just going to clean the brush up a bit. There we go. Okay. So a little bit in the center. And we're just going to spread it all around. Try not to get those holes. So if you like this video, please like and share and comment if there's anything else you'd like me to do a video on. I do do most crafts. That's funny, I do do. Okay, and we're just gonna spread that around. Again, I clog the hole. There we go. And then we'll go like this. Oh, and in case you have little creatures, I have a cat and a dog. And while I was making this video, someone ate one of my, well, crunched one of my buttons. So be careful for the little guys. They get you when you least expect it. So, like my video, share. If you want to get notifications of when I make new videos, Hit the bell button, the little bell. Make sure if you get a bubble that you spread it out. And you can use these on, jeez, I use them on my knitting and my crocheting. I also, you can use them on scrapbooking you make it personalized with your handmade buttons. I mean, really, when it, people say 100% handmade and you can say right down to the buttons, that's pretty amazing, right? Clean out that hole. And the final one. So this had us doing 10. I try and always do extras. So I have them for another project or if I decide I want to sell them. Don't forget to do the bark. 
and make sure those holes are clear. Make sure you clean your pin or else when you use it in your quilting, it will not work well. And there you go. Um, if you, you want to do the bark, you can do the other side. I usually just do the one side that is going to be facing out. I did both sides for the base coat, but I'm not doing both sides for the top coat. And there we go. We have a beautiful little button, hand painted button for our wonderful projects. People use these on toques, on, on booties. I use them on dog sweaters. They're just a lot of fun to do. And I mean, it took me all day. Well, first I had to get inspired to do it, but you know, once they're done, they're just they're good to go. They're just great. Uh, and there we have it. So don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, do all those things. And uh, have a great day. Talk to you later and thanks for watching.